hold on. That is gross. <laughs> oh. Hey, I'm Regan and welcome to our homestead. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you all the gory, juicy details of how a little green tree frog, well, not so little, managed to squeeze its way into one of the most critical components of our off-grid solar power system, costing us nearly $2,000 in repairs. But like all good homesteading disaster stories, there's a silver lining and we've been able to turn the situation around. Not only has this frog fiasco showed us the weaknesses in our system that we're gonna to attend to today, but it's given us cause to consider other ways that we can improve and upgrade our system and I'll share some of that with you on this video as well. But first, let me tell you what happened a month ago. So like any other morning, the first thing that I did when I woke up was pulled up the Victron app and checked on the status of our solar power system. The app allows me to remotely monitor how full the batteries are, how much solar power we're generating and go into all of the details of the system. And the first thing that I noticed on my screen when I opened it up was that not only were we not generating any power, which that was okay, it was early in the morning, that could be okay, but the device that shows you how much power you're generating, the MPPT or solar charge controller, it didn't even exist on the little graphic on the screen. And I thought, that's weird, is it always like that? Or is it just because we're not generating power? I'll leave it for a bit. And so I slept in a little bit, opened the app again in an hour when the sun was well and truly up and still no solar power. And my first suspicion was because we'd just had a few days of rain, moisture's got in somewhere and shorted something out. That's kind of the only thing that had changed. And, you know, I'm gonna find that something's tripped, hopefully something really simple. So I got up, came over here to the solar shed where all of the gear is mounted. And so it's in a little shed, which is under a bigger carport. So I wasn't really thinking I was gonna find anything wrong with the gear, like the charge controller or the inverter or the batteries, because they're all pretty well housed out of all of the environmental conditions that could affect them but I thought maybe the solar panels, and you can see there behind me, we've got them racked up in such a way that the front foot of them is touching the ground, which that's fine because all of the wiring is up behind them well and truly off the ground. I thought I'll check that anyway. So I had a look at all the wiring that was outside. Everything's waterproofed anyway, and it's all kind of plug and play. You can't really get it wrong, but went through the whole system, couldn't find a problem. Went into the shed and had a look at the MPPT or solar charge controller. And on the screen, it said no PV input, which basically means it's not getting any solar power at all. So I switched everything off, switched everything back on again, let it kind of boot up. I thought, you know, it's their, their electronics, they've got kind of computer systems inside them, maybe something just went a little bit awry. Hello, IT, have you tried turning it off and on again? Still no PV input. I thought, well, let's troubleshoot. Let's simplify the whole thing. We'll unplug everything and just plug one solar panel in. No PV input. Now we're really lucky, not only can we remotely monitor our system, but we're working with a retailer who's supplied a lot of the components for the system and they've helped us configure it all. And the way that they've helped us configure it is remotely. I can remotely access it, but I can give them access as well. And so I thought, well, this is kind of a bit beyond me. I gave them a call and said, this is what I've woken up to. Can you dial into the system and see if there's something that maybe I just don't understand? And so he had a look through the whole system and he was like, that's really weird. He goes, I can't tell you what's gone wrong, but kind of explain to me again how your system's set up. So I, you know, explained how it was all mounted, how it was all in out of the weather, how we had had a bit of rain. And he said, yeah, but what I'm seeing on the logs here is that at 2.34 a.m. this morning, your solar charge controller just went offline, like somebody switched it off or disconnected it. I said, well, obviously that didn't happen. And he said, have you got anything else kind of that's out there that's maybe on some sort of a timer or that would explain some sort of a spike in voltage or something that might've tripped it? And really nothing made sense. At that time of night, we're running minimally. There's nothing that could have done that. And he said, well, you really got no choice. You're gonna to have to pull it off of the system, uh, you know, disconnect it all, bring it into us, we'll have a look at it. But it sounds like something's gone faulty in the system and it's probably not gonna be your fault. You've got the system mounted correctly. It's in, out of the weather. It could be a firmware problem. It could be a hardware problem. Something's just faulted and it's probably not your fault, which means this is gonna be a warranty claim. And I thought, this is awesome. I mean, it's annoying. I've got to disconnect everything. I've got to run the generator to get the batteries topped right up so that we don't run out of power. But I'm gonna get a free upgrade here on a unit that's not even 12 months old. And with any luck, there's maybe a newer model and I'll get that. 
as well. So disconnected it all, took it into the city. It's about an hour drive away to get there. And they said, look, leave it with us. We'll give you a call when we've kind of figured out what the problem is. They were super busy. So I left it with them overnight. The next morning I get the call that I really didn't want to get. And the guys had opened it up and they said, look, we worked out pretty much straight away what had gone wrong, not by what we saw, but by what we smelled. We opened the case and staring right back at us was the largest green tree frog we'd ever seen. And they were like, you are just the unluckiest person ever. First of all, he said, I, I, I kind of want you to pat yourself on the back. You, you've got one of the cleanest, most dust free units we've ever seen. He said, you off grid guys, like normally we expect to open these things and find them like full of dust and dirt and spiders and all sorts of stuff. And he said, explain again how you've got it mounted. And so I said, you know, it's in a little shed and the shed's in a carport and we bug spray everything. And he goes, you're doing absolutely everything right. This was a freak of nature occurrence. It's like a one in a billion thing. Now these, these units, they've got these little vents on the top because they've got to get rid of heat. They're an electronic component, right? But the, the vents are really small. He said, sometimes we've seen geckos get in and on the very odd occasion, the geckos managed to touch two spots and short something out. But usually it's just never gonna happen that a large enough animal is gonna squeeze into a unit like this and be able to touch enough components to fry it. But unfortunately in our case, that's exactly what had happened. And also unfortunately, the warranty conditions stipulate, except for environmental conditions outside of our control. Well, a large green tree frog squished inside your MPPT, that's definitely an environmental condition that's outside of Victron's control, so no warranty. Now, I just wanna give a shout out to Forbes Batteries here who we've been working with over the last year or so. We've bought a number of components off them. They've got great prices, really, really good advice. They're not sponsored. They don't even know I'm making this video, but I have really appreciated their service. And that ability that they've given us to work with them remotely where they can dial in, and troubleshoot, diagnose, they, they configured our entire system for us remotely has just been invaluable. And so look, Yep, it cost a lot of money to fix this mistake, but not their fault. In fact, they did everything they could and they even looked after us with price, but a really expensive lesson to learn. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> oh, the smell. Oh, mate. There's another one. No. Oh, God, that stinks. Oh, oh that's a baby. Are you sure it's not its leg? Oh, damn. Uh. Oh damn. It's, it's hooked. It's like a little burrito. <laughs> you got it there, shaky hands? Oh, oh no, baby. Oh. oh. It was Sorry. just a little baby with his mum. Sorry, dude. Damn. Why are we saying sorry to it? It broke our stuff. So welcome to our solar shed, or should I say, general purpose homestead dumping ground space. Like any good undercover area on a homestead, it can kind of junk up a little bit if you don't keep on top of it. I think it's fine that we're parking the ride on mower here and keeping some of the gardening gear in here. That just makes sense to keep it out of the weather. But because I've let it get a little bit messy and then I haven't whipper snipped, I just don't want any creatures or critters feeling right at home in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is clean up. We're gonna whip a snip. We're gonna clear the space to make sure that no creature, be they rodent, reptile, or amphibian, feels like they can invade this space again. But the main thing I wanna to do today is to upgrade that little kit shed there that's housing all of the solar gear. Now, if you've been following our journey of building and kind of upgrading our off-grid solar system from the start, you'll know that that little shed is all we started with. And a lot of you gave me feedback in the early days saying you don't think it's going to stand up to our Australian summers and it's probably going to get too hot in there. And to be honest with you, I agreed with you. We were lucky enough that before we got to the height of summer and the real hot, like 38, almost 40 degree days, we were able to score this um, carport for free from a friend and we put that up over the whole setup. I've got remote temperature monitoring in there. And so we have not recorded a day over 30 degrees Celsius inside that shed, which is perfect. So the operating conditions for all of that gear 
can be up to 40. I mean, the batteries are up to 50 degrees, but none of that gear is gonna be suffering now in the heat conditions. So I knew we're taking care of heat, we're definitely taking care of rain and moisture. I mean, we're double kind of protected here under two roofs, but I got a little bit lax and I started leaving the door open thinking that I needed to allow for ventilation. I wasn't worried about heat or rain or anything like that anymore, but obviously I didn't consider vermin. I mean, we did, we were ant sanding around the shed. So I'd seen a few ants kind of in and out of the shed. I didn't want them crawling into any components. We were bug bombing occasionally to make sure that, you know, roaches and spiders weren't making their homes here but I never thought about things that eat those things. And these little kit sheds, unfortunately, even with the door shut, they've got a lot of spaces that kind of critters can crawl into. So one of the first things we'll do today is we're gonna do some expander foam to close up every little gap in that shed, but I'm also gonna add some proper ventilation that will allow us to shut the door. So we're gonna cut some big holes in the sides because we don't have to worry about rain getting in here anymore. And we're gonna fly mesh those windows so that nothing can get inside that shed anymore. But first, Let's start tidying up. Back down to earth. It's just as good as up there. I'm gonna keep you near. Cause you're all I need, my dear. Do you feel the winds are turning around? Cause what goes up must always come back down. Lighting change. Yep, the sun's on the other side of me. It's the next day. We definitely ran out of light yesterday to get this project done. And the reason for that is I don't have a light in here and that's by design. Lights attract bugs and bugs attract bigger things. So before we get started doing some mods to this shed, I wanna clean up in here a little bit more. I wanna reapply our ant sand and some of our bug repellent. But also now that that new MPPT is installed, I wanna get the covers back on all this gear, tidy up the cables, just make it look really neat and tidy. And then we'll get to doing this window and sealing everything up. such a simple upgrade and it was such an easy idea. I only wish I'd thought about it sooner. Would have saved us some heartache, definitely would have saved us some dollars. My only hope now is that by telling you the story and showing you what we did to make sure it doesn't happen again, maybe it'll save someone else out there as well. This expander foam was a little bit tricky to work with. I'd never used it before. It's a little bit gooey, but you can kind of cut it to shape afterwards. You can clean it up with a little bit of petrol on a rag. And so that's tidied up quite nicely in there. Nothing's getting through that fly screen. And the main thing is we've got a whole lot of ventilation now, letting hot air out, especially from these big units like the inverter and that new MPPT but the main thing we've been able to achieve, we can stop those frogs from ever getting in there again. So I've got a bunch of stuff that I want to upgrade on this system and this setup going into the future. We're almost out of space in this little shed. This has been perfect for a $300 little kit shed, ideal. I would just say, seal it up, add some ventilation, make sure you can shut the door. But I really don't have any more room in here for expansion. I do wanna add two more batteries. There's definitely no more room for that. If I ever wanted to add a second inverter or a second charge controller, which those are upgrades we could do, there's no more room on the wall back there. So what we really wanna do is look at upgrading this entire carport to not just be a carport, but be a fully enclosed shed. However, we've learned our lesson. I'm gonna plan that one carefully to make sure that it is totally vermin proof before we even attempt that. What is coming up in the very near future, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that, is see those solar panels out there. They're doing a good job, they're racked up secure, they're not going anywhere, but I'm not entirely happy with it. And because we like to move our solar panels four times a year, so seasonally, to follow the sun, we've got an idea for a flexible solar racking system. We've got the sawmill up and running. Kirsty's dad's just finished a prototype DIY chainsaw mill that we wanna feature, so that's coming up in a future 
future video. And what we're gonna be making is a whole lot of timber to design some solar racking because not only do we wanna be able to move it around and adjust it to the seasons, but we're adding even more panels. You saw me moving them there earlier, a whole bunch of panels I scored a while ago and just haven't been able to hook into the system. We're going to 60 panels overall. And this MPPT, the thing we fried, is what's gonna allow us to do it. Have a look at some of our previous solar videos. We talk about why we specifically chose such a beefy unit and it was so that we could upgrade the amount of solar that we could collect into the future. So we're heading into winter. We definitely wanna get new batteries in here. We wanna get new panels on. All that and more is coming up in future episodes. Make sure you subscribe, but until then, we'll see you next time. Oh, yeah.